Hello and welcome to the Talking Wealth Podcast. I'm Doug Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within. Today we're going to be talking about creating a great trading plan. But before we get into that, I'd like to introduce my co-host Janine Cox. How are you? Fantastic. How are you today? Oh, look, I'm having a great week. Are you? Oh, it's wonderful to hear. I, I know, isn't it good? And you just had lunch. So it's even better. I've just had lunch, yes, and we went. I went to Moomba on the weekend and it's been beautiful weather here in Melbourne, so I don't know why anybody would want to live anywhere else in the country. Really? Than, than <laughs> I can think of plenty of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't tell anybody. We're trying to keep it a secret. You're trying to keep more people here, are you? Yeah, it's like during, when we had all those lockdowns, people mm. saying, what about all the lockdowns in Melbourne? I said, yeah, we're trying to keep everybody out, <laughs> not keep everybody in. It's so great that's what that we you've got to a do. good But today we're going to talk about how to develop a trading system. And we're going to incorporate three, the three major areas mm -hmm. in developing a trading system. Because, But I, before we get into that, I want to set some context mm. to what we're actually doing because trading in the stock market can be super exciting. Mm -hmm. And I know we get a lot of students that just – when they start studying what we teach them, they just getting they just get consumed by it. And what oh, I mean a by lot in it. they just get they get obsessed with it like a mm. you know a drug a drug addict. They just can't oh, yeah. get enough of what we're teaching them and what we're doing, and they get super excited about that. It's and it can like be, the brain's going off saying, "I knew that there was more to this. I knew there was something." Well, they get so many ah uh, uh, moments. How. It's like, yeah. oh wow, that's how they work. Mm. Oh wow, and then they start watching the news and. They go, wow, now I understand mm. this. Or they see reports coming out. They go, or oh. they understand why you actually say, don't worry about watching the news. Well, they do too <laughs> from that point of view. And it's also really profitable. I mean, you know, mm. lots of our students go, hey, well, look, I paid for your course in one trade or two trades or I paid for the course before I finished it. All, there's so many different things. That's so really profitable. But the flip side of that is those people who are not one of our students and getting into trading or just starting out in their trading journey or in the, you know, the first mm -hmm. 12 months or so, which we do get a lot of people on our YouTube channel who are in that first one to two years of dabbling with the market. So, but for those people caught off and it can be really risky yes. or they, they think it's really risky and, mm -hmm. it, and for some of them it really is. Um, but it's also, they think about it as a challenge. It's hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to get into that in terms of setting that context around what we're going to chat about. Challenge and hard. I mean, challenge is great though, isn't mm. it? Well, it is. Some people love what? it. Yeah, well, what do other people think then? Some people shy away from a challenge. Right. So the challenge is fear, a fearful thing for some people. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah. I mean, knowledge is the enemy of fear. Mm. So the more you know, the less fear you have. And I equate probably the analogy I use is, you know, standing in a room that's pitch black. Mm -hmm. You can't hear anything. You can't see anything. And what goes on in your brain is like, oh, I don't because you've got no sensory thing and so Sounds there's like fear. Sounds like one of those things like celebrity get me out of here or survival. Something like that. But that you hear the noise thing. and you go, oh, what's that noise? Or walking down a real dark, you know, street. Alley. Uh, alley or street and you think you hear little noises and that's that. I don't have the knowledge of what that is so that mm -hmm. fear comes up. But if you're in the standing in that room and you turn the lights on, you've got a lot more information, a lot more knowledge to make better decisions. Especially if you're standing there and all of a sudden I get a bit of a fright because I wasn't expecting to see your face. Well, that's true too. <laughs> I've been told I'm a bit of a scary dude at times anyway. But again, you know, as, as I said, knowledge is knowledge is the enemy of fear. So today's mm. podcast to me is really about those people just who have got in their mind, they're thinking, oh, I wouldn't mind getting into trading. Mm -hmm. And for people that have been... They're dabbling in trading or in that first one to two years. So we're going to get into trading the stock market and tra getting a, how to develop a trading system. But I want to first hit, well, what happens if you don't have a proper trading plan or mm. trading system in place? What happens? Well, you've just got no baseline. You've got no reference points. If something goes wrong, you don't know what to do. It's like not having a mm. parachute when you need one. Yep. In the stock market, sometimes people do need that. So it's just a comfort thing really I think for a lot of people and it gives them a great deal of I guess more ease and confidence when they've got that. Mm. And I guess you're, if you're on the other side you really don't know what you're missing and, until you don't until you have it and then some, if someone took it away from you you'd be thinking well I can't trade because I need to have that. I can't trade without that. So mm. um, I think it's an essential. So is trading without a proper trading plan or playing trading system easier or harder than having one? Well, I actually think it's harder and I, I don't, I, I can't imagine how people can think about not having one because that, that was the first thing that came, I came across when I first started looking at the stock market mm. was that you had to have a trading plan, but I didn't really understand what that was or what it meant. I just sort of said, okay, trading and plan. Um, plan could be anything, could be something really simple mm. or complex depending on 
where you want to take it and, and how you're trading. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for someone who doesn't have that understanding and that knowledge, I, I think the reason that the fear that you were talking about before and the reason that people see it as a, a negative or a mm. challenge is a negative is only because they don't know what it is or how to use it. Mm. What, I, what I, want is, I want to paint a picture for you right now before we get into the, the three areas that we're going to talk about. We're going to be talking a bit about risk management, trading discipline, market research and helping people put those together into a proper trading plan strategy mm. uh, for that. But just imagine why I kidnapped you, okay? Mm. Really? Yeah, I, and I put a bag on your head like a black thing. You can see them on the TV, you know, where they run up with the bag. Where's this going? They run. Just go with me, okay? I don't know if I want to go no, this way. You don't, you, you're getting kidnapped. You, you, you don't go with willingly when you're getting kidnapped. We scream up beside you in a van, open the door, guys come out, mm. throw you in the thing, black sack on your head, take you somewhere. Hours and hours we drive you around, fly your places, blah, blah, blah. We drop you somewhere. Mm. You have no idea where you are. You've got no mobile phone, no satellite navigation, no GPS, no nothing. Mm. What do you do? What's the first thing you're going to do? I would be just looking at around to see where I am first. Okay. See so if, if I can recognise any landmarks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once you recognise... I'll get a good idea where you you've are. You've taken the bag off my head when you've dropped me off. You've taken handcuffs just off. Should clarify you know, that. The gaffer tape, the whole bit's off. You now you now you're roaming free. We've just left you there mm -hmm. and dumped you there. So now the first step is you're finding out where you are and getting your mm. bearings on that, and you're taking in information mm. to learn how safe you are, all that sort of stuff, and looking at your environment about what you can use and resources that you can use yep. to help you. That's really where. We can start off. And that's then, exactly the, the answer. First of all is mm. you're using your eyes mm. to see what, what's around and what you can see. And secondly, you'd be looking to see if there are people around that you perhaps could that could help you. To give you more information. To give you more information or maybe a phone to call somebody. Because mm. mm. to me it's, it's, it's sort of what a lot of people do when they go to the share market is they don't actually understand the landscape that mm. they're in. So they don't actually work out where they're at. Yep. What is safe and what they need. They don't understand that sort of stuff. Because to me, if I drop you there and tell you to get home, mm. the first thing you do is we'll figure out where you are first because that gives you the first reference point that you're and talking about. And I've actually about. got a really good sense of direction. You so do. So I've got one of those internal GPSs where we could be driving along right and, up. you know, my, and I'll say to my husband, can you look at on the map, you know, look at the GPS or look at the map and tell me where we're going or which way do you think we should go? And sometimes the GPS will actually send you in in a, the wrong way mm. or it will send you on in a direction that is, just doesn't make sense. So yeah. I can pretty quickly work out where I need to go. So yeah. that's one thing that I'd be really confident with it, just by looking. I'd be, first thing I'd be looking for is the sun mm. as well, the buildings, the sun, whatever's around So what me. are you doing? You're actually, now you're creating Navigating. a plan. Now you're creating a plan and a strategy mm. to get you from where you are because where you are is not where you want to be. To where you want to go. To where you want to go, which is back home again, back to safety again. So mm. once you understand where you are, you create the plan of where you want to go and then you enact that plan and take in more information as you're going to enact that yeah. plan until you get home. Mm -hmm. And that's to me, is a really good analogy for people in learning how to develop a trading system or plan mm. for success. Because often some people jump the gun, don't they? And they just, they just start trading willy nilly without any sort of strategy, any sort of plan. So Whilst trading is profitable. And that's interesting in itself because mm. it's not about the fear for them. There's obviously some other motivator mm. in there for those people, but the ones that don't start, like, you know, I connect the analogy that you were just talking about mm. with, you know, a fear of the stock market rather than those people who actually like a challenge and want to get into it in a different way. But maybe some of those people like those sort of things because the panic rooms and those... Um, yeah, some people love challenges, so they, yeah, they go right. towards the stock market and just treated as a challenge and they love right. it. But mm. does that make them profitable on the stock market? Not necessarily. No, it doesn't mm. really. And you get some people are naturally attuned to more gambling. So they'll, they'll go horse racing, mm. casino, whatever else. They'll go to the stock market because they treat it like a gambling, but it doesn't also make them sure they're profitable. Well, look, either. some people love cards and like mm. I really think cards. that people who love ca playing cards and, oh, cards and understand the card games have an incredible capacity to be able mm. to trade the stock market if they understand how processes work, you know, but I mean, obviously there's a, there's a range of, you were talking about gambler before, yeah. people who don't have a plan, obviously a gambling. Mm. So starting out like that, if you've never played a card game before, you go and sit down at a table and you 
put some money down and then start mm. trying to play cards without really having an understanding of the game, mm. then that to me is is definitely gambling. Well, gambling on the stock market is only happens when you don't know what you're doing. Mm. So if you know what you're doing, then it's not gambling. See, I like my analogy about the card game better than yours. Well, that's fine. You can have that. But maybe we people can vote on it, you know, <laughs> so we can talk about that. But let's say somebody is, they've been trying to trade and they all of a sudden realise that their current trading approach mm -hmm. is just not working. Uh, and they're the people we also yep. want to help too because there really are several essential components that we need to incorporate to develop not just a plan or a strategy but a, a, re a reliable and effective mm. plan and strategy because I often say to people you have to treat do trading so it's boring to you, if that makes sense. And what I mean by that is is – one plus one equals two every time. Mm. And while profits will rise and fall because we can't necessarily, we can have consistency in performance, but yep. we can't necessarily have consistency all the time in return. So like we get 10% a year or 20% a year or 50% a year or 100% a mm. year every single year. Well, the stock market doesn't trade like that. Yeah. So we need to be have, have a yep. plan or a process and a system that's consistent and reliable. Exactly. And the wherewithal and the knowledge and the experience and the skill to be able to be flexible with that strategy mm. and plan depending on the market because the market yep. changes personality. So we're going to discuss three key key elements. So what's the, the risk first management? One? Risk management. That's I know this the key is the key one. We, we often talk about that. Do, have we done that to death really or is this something that we can explore a bit further? I don't think we can do it enough. I know I did a, an interview for talkingwealth.com uh, yesterday actually with uh, one of our experts, a guy called Jeff Link, mm. who's a – an advisor in the US and he wrote a book called um, Protecting the Pig, mm. which is about protecting your piggy bank and growing it. And he's all about exactly what we're talking about is basically what you don't lose determines how much you make, which mm. is what we talk about in my books and what you and I keep talking about. It's not about how much you make on any one trade that makes you successful. It's what you keep in your bank account. Which is interesting, isn't it? Mm. Because they're the ones that people talk about. They do. People don't say, oh, look, I lost 10% this week on a trade and I was really good at the way that I'd I closed excited. it out. I'd be excited losing 10% mm. and if I didn't, if I, if I hadn't have exited, I would have lost 50%. That's mm. an exciting win. That's right. Only losing 10. And, and that's where we say to people, you know, get, get used to losing mm. because, you know, trading is the only game that you're ever going to play if you want to treat it as a game or if you want to treat it as a profession. But it's the only profession you know that you can go into that you know you're going to have losses. That's right. Before you even start. So the quicker you get used to it, the better. So what is risk or risk management? Mm. Well, I suppose what is risk and then we'll go into risk management a bit. How's that? Well, I think we've talked mm -hmm. about risk and you've asked me that question before on another mm -hmm. podcast. So risk is, you know, it can be different for different mm -hmm. people. Yeah. So risk, people connect risk with loss. They do, but it's not necessarily. It's not necessarily. I mean, risk is a, is all encompassing in terms of how you're approaching because we're talking about trading, it's mm. how we're approaching the trading process. Yep. So it's always about having that risk management thought in mind in terms of being able to minimise one's risk or one's losses or minimise the risk of affecting your own mindset because yep. that's another part of risk that's really important. It is. In the stock market, given that 80% is about the psychology and how you handle yourself in the mm. market. So go back to a car. Not cards, car analogy we're going to go to now. So in a car, do you have total control over the motor vehicle you're driving? Well, that depends, doesn't it? Depends on who taught you. <laughs> depends on your, your brakes and your tyres and everything else. No, but, but say, so let's say your, your car's perfectly legal. It's a brand new car. You're just driving it off the lot. It's 100% yeah, perfect. Yeah, you do. You have control over that. Okay, but do you have control over everything when you're driving your car? No, you don't have control over what's around you. You can only control what you're doing. Yeah. So that's the same as the stock market. Same as the stock market. Mm -hmm. And to me is control what you can control, but have rules and strategies and processes around you for what you can't control. Yeah. I think the way that you've said that, I think that will really cause the penny to drop. A lot hopefully, of people. Hopefully. Because I think if we talk about these things enough that eventually it sinks in, doesn't it? Well, it is. Can you, can you control the stock market? No. Can you, you control the stock good. on the stock market? No. Um, and that's really the point. And that's mm. what I say to our students is control what you can control mm. because the only couple of things that I can do on the stock market, if I'm in the stock market, I can decide to buy, I can decide to hold, or I can decide to sell. 
That's the three it's decisions pretty simple, I can isn't make. It? It's pretty simple and keep it that simple. I can't control the All Lord News Index or the Dow Jones or the S&P 500. Can't control that. Mm. And I don't know, you know, I can't make it go up, I can't make it go down, and I can't make a stock go up and down. All I can decide is am I going to keep holding that stock mm-hmm. or sell it? Or if I don't own it, do I want to buy that stock? Mm. And that's really how simple it is, but then we need to have strategies in our plan around what stocks we're going to bring on, when we're going to buy them, um, how we're going to construct our mm-hmm. portfolio, which is things we've talked about in other podcasts and we talk about in our book. Yeah, because risk is about mm. not just mm. looking at the individual stock yeah. and what you're risking, but it's about looking at the whole portfolio and the big picture as well mm. in terms of it could be that you want to incorporate what the market's doing in your process. It could be that you're you're making decisions just based on the stock, but you're making assessments all the time mm. based on what's going on. Mm. Now, I know Buffett's number one rule is don't lose money. Mm. Buffett's number two rule is refer to rule number one. <laughs> so we know that. But is that possible all the time? Well, you have to be practical and realistic about it. Well, I'm sure Stock Buffett market. has times where his stocks go down. Oh, definitely. And loss situation. So, and it does. And I'm sure, I'm mm. sure it actually does happen. But risk management techniques. So what do we got in terms of risk management techniques? Um, look, I think... One of the things that I like about this topic is if you can actually hone in on into a few specific stocks and you mm-hmm. can get to know those really well, that's actually part of, it's not a technique, but it's a way of minimising your risk because you're not spreading yourself too broadly across too many different stocks mm-hmm. and you're much more able to focus what you're doing. But the actual techniques themselves are more about the nuts and bolts of it. You yep. know, you're managing risk strategies and your um, initial strategies that you're using when you're first getting into trades to manage that, um, you know, minimise the risk to your your capital and then the trailing strategies that actually are used as the stock's unfolding. So they're the main ones, but it's also about the money management is part of that whole risk management as well, making Mm. sure that you're, um, you're, you're not risking more than you really need to on any one share and you know, especially for people starting out in the stock market, there's a lot of people that start out in the stock market and they think that they have to be trading certain size positions because Mm. they think, oh, it's that fear of missing out. The FOMO kicks in, so they're trading bigger positions than what they're really ready for. So it's about making sure that when you're doing that risk management assessment for yourself that you actually look at, well, what, what position size should I be trading based on my experience now? Mm. Yeah, and I think that is that's really really critical, and I'd like to get into that um, in a minute, uh, not just at the moment, because obviously what you said is a few different things here. Is there are different strategies mm. we can use to minimise risk? But I want to ask you: Is most of the risk work done before you buy or after you buy? Oh, look, a large majority of it is done before you even press that button. Because mm. I know a lot of people mm. will buy a stock, but then they're not really sure what risk they're taking. Mm-hmm. They're not and not sure how what that what risk that particular stock has within their portfolio or creates in their portfolio. Yeah, I mean one of the things that you always should do yeah. is have a look at the share, which was what we do on our live show. We look yeah. at shares and help people get an understanding yep. of how volatile a share is, yep. where it is in the market in terms of its size. Yep. We're always showing people watch lists to show them the market capitalization of shares. We're, we're trying to explain that we pick the biggest shares and why we pick those biggest shares. We've shown that you can make just as much money trading the big shares yeah. as what you can make trading those small ch- shares. Yep. We've shown the, the degrees of some of these rises and falls that happen in the the smaller shares and how you can pretty much have your whole profit wiped out mm-hmm. in a very short space of time and you're more likely to have that happen on the smaller shares. So that's all that understanding of those things in the stock market is actually part of that risk management you know, the bigger picture risk management um, thinking. Yeah, because obviously, you know, what you're talking about is liquidity. You're talking about volatility. You're talking mm. about market capitalization. You're talking about personality of the and stock. And look, let's face it, the personality of certain shares will suit the personality of the trader. Yeah. So you can either make things completely black and white and you really mm. don't give a hoot about what share you trade. Yeah. You just want to find something that you can find a good set of rules on that mm. work. Or you can approach it a different way, which some students do, is they'll actually look at the stocks to gain an appreciation of the personality of the share and decide whether that's a stock they really want to trade. Does that really suit Mm. me? Because some people have a real, um, I guess, intuitive sense about it, 
So it really, when they start learning how you do it properly and, and determine some of these things, mm. it just, it's so mm. easy for them and and it makes their job yeah. easier in terms of understanding the stock market and, and the, their own risk. Other people, they struggle with that a little bit because some people are trying to, you know, find all of the shares to trade. So they don't want well, to let go mm. of some of the shares. So they've got so many shares on their list that um, it becomes more confusing for them. And and that's those are the people that you were referring about, referring to before when you were talking about they're more likely to be in that group that see challenge as a negative thing. And yet, mm. you know, they're doing a lot of the things that, are the opposite to what they should be doing because they're probably the type of people that would identify with being more conservative. And yet some of them, when they when you look at the shares in their portfolio, will be trading a lot of stocks that they shouldn't even have in there. Now, I don't mind a challenge, but I'm also, I'm not going to say, I'm not necessarily the sharpest tool in the shed all the time and I'm also not, I like to do, make things easy. So I love the KISS principle and trading is simple mm. and we should make it simple, but often people try and make it complex and more challenging than it completely needs to be. Mm. For example, looking at, you know, 500 stocks or looking at Australian stocks, US stocks, Asian stocks and really complicating it. And then that's where you get these yeah. people that just go, oh my Jesus, it's overwhelming. I've got to look at all these things and you don't. And Well, we just had a conversation with a gentleman today who's mm. come from the UK mm. And so he was trying to trade UK stocks and Aussie stocks at the same time and realised, well, I don't need to do this anymore. Mm. I can let go and I can just stick to Aussie stocks, keep it really simple, reduce the pool that I'm having to look at because mm. it's all a time factor. Mm. And and you, you'll find that your mind becomes almost like a camera taking snapshots of what these charts look like and the sort of stuff that you absorb, you won't even really comprehend what you're truly absorbing until you get down to that point of putting all of that knowledge into practice and it, in that moment when you're trading, it just all starts to make sense and you think, I know exactly what I've got to do mm. at this point. It just makes it simple, doesn't mm. it? Because obviously we've talked a bit about everything. Most stuff on risk happens before we get into a stock. So mm. therefore you've, you've said finding the right stocks that suit you and your personality and what you're wanting to do. So narrowing down that selection to make things easy for you. Second thing we talked about was things like liquidity, mm -hmm. volatility and the personality of each one of those stocks, making sure that suits with what you need to do. We've also talked about um, some of the tools you can use or rules that you can use, which are um, more specifically stop losses. And you said, you know, basically you talked about uh, a trailing one and an initial one. So mm. we have an initial stop loss when you first buy. That yeah, when I first got into the stock market, I really... You know, even though it sounds, and you know, I'm not saying mm. that I'm the smartest person either, but I've, I've, my background is a technical person. Mm. So for me, you know, when I looked at it, I didn't really understand what that was. I, I could mm. see that people were saying, okay, you've got to set your risk management at the start mm. and so that you know if it falls where well, you're going to get out. Mm. But then I didn't truly comprehend this stuff about managing the trade once you're in it mm. until I'd gone into it in a much greater depth. Um, mm. because when you're just sort of looking at things on the surface, which a lot of people are, you know, it doesn't become real and you can't sort of see past a certain point, which is why we train people the way that we do yeah. so that all of those bits fit together in a really nice way. And then it's just a matter of saying, okay, right, for this particular scenario, I need this. I'll get my tool out. This is what I'm using. That's sort of a way of thinking, mm. a simple way of thinking about it. It keeps it simple and mm. it keeps it, it's very robust. And that gives people peace of mind because they have space in their head because they're not worried about the market. They're not always, um, you know, looking at multiple, multiple, multiple mm. things. And I think a lot of people try and eat an elephant when mm -hmm. they're trying to trade where it doesn't need to be. You can just have the toe and still be super profitable. That's right. To make it nice Look, and I've and worked with people who actually yeah. will go to the nth degree mm -hmm. and they'll document absolutely everything about the okay. trades, they'll try every single strategy to see if so they can get it to work. They go for like absolutely try to go for the 100% um, mm -hmm. win approach and that blows me away when I see the what the extent of the amount of work they've done. But, but the way you want to get to is a point where you can say, okay, I'm here, I need to get to this point, like your mm -hmm. analogy before about wanting to get home, but yeah. thinking about, well, what, what, do I re what do I need to be able to trade? There's the nth degree... There's the there's nothing, 
and there's something in the middle and I know I'm mm. going to fit in there somewhere and it's mm. at a point. And it's hard, isn't it? Because when people yeah. are new to the stock market, they don't have those reference points well, to they know, know where they, they need know. to be. You know, so mm. it's not until you get made aware of something you don't know that you go, oh, that makes sense, doesn't it? Which is why yeah. I like the way the approach that we use to, to helping them get past that mm. in terms of the, teaching them to a depth where they're actually, they stand back and say, well, you know, I don't need Dale and Janine anymore. Well, that's what we do. We yeah. tell them we, we're going to make ourselves mm. redundant and we say we should. And but that's where, the, you know, they get so many aha moments through the whole course because, you know, to me, risk is about understanding what risk is, mm. measuring that risk. Because it's also, you know, when you go into a stock, well, how much upside potential have you got? That's also part of the risk as well. If there's not enough potential, then don't go into it. Mm. But it's obviously, you know, we talk about, you know, nobody ever rings us with the stock they own going up and complaining. They always start to, you know, contact us on YouTube or our live streams or whatever else when their stock's going down and they're worried about it. Yeah. Well, you don't need to be. You can eliminate 100% of your fear and, and your worry mm. by just understanding risk and setting in those things like stop losses, you know, initial stop losses, trailing stop losses that we talk about in my books yep. and we talk about in our course. We can diversify your portfolio, which again we talk about in our books. Mm. You know, my first book, How to Beat the Managed Funds by 20%, still free. You just got to pay the shipping like for nine, ten dollars or whatever the shipping is. That's like dirt cheap yeah. to learn how to do this stuff, mm. you know. And all of that helps us limit our risk in the market. And if we can limit our risk in the market, it lives us maximum ability to profit when the market's going the right direction. Look, I was talking to someone mm. the other day who said, yeah. look, I've got a friend and they're trying to Everybody's trade. Got a friend. Because, yeah, I know. Well, this particular person um, who watches us on Talking Wealth is not trading yet. Yeah. And they've got a friend who is trading and mm. the friend's trying to say, oh, look, come on, you know, come and start trading with me. Well, I've got these great stocks. I've been making, I've made some great money. And the other person's saying, no, I just want to sit back. I want to learn as much as I can first. Mm. You know, we're talking about two different people. These are the examples of both extremes that yeah, we were so talking about So the cowboy cowgirl and the somebody who's smart. The one that loves the challenges to the point where they've taken it to the extreme of not having the knowledge, but mm. they've made a few trades, but that gives them that false sense of confidence. So they haven't had a reality check yet. Yet, but um, they, they might will. be with um, the market when the market corrects. Oh, will. So, They'll have it. Yeah. yeah. And so the other person is the opposite. So they're like extremely timid about getting into the marketplace, but just wanting that. It, they might be more security-based, much more security-based hmm. than the other person, say. It is, but you get that anyway. I mean, I know, and you've had mm. people do the same thing, you know, where people are, you know, hounding you, oh, come on, do this, do this, you know. And I remember the, the mm. tech boom bust people hammering me because I wasn't getting into these crappy tech, tech stocks. Mm -hmm. We're making money, we're making money, and we're making mozzas and people making, you know, a million dollars in a year and stuff like that. And they're going, come on, Dale. And I went, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. And I'm still trading. Mm -hmm. And they're all broke. Yep. Because they made a lot of money, they lost it all money. So they, it's, it's, win, it's basically win big, lose big, basically. Um, but it's about understanding risk and your exposure to mm. the market or an instrument. Now, I don't want to, so I keep going there's on. Because there's risk, a bit about trading discipline that we haven't spoken Well, that's what I was going to say. Let's go really. into trading discipline now because yeah. that's that's another. So if risk management is critical and, and it's not about buy. Everything is about buy, buy, buy. And that's what a lot of people think. It's, oh, what's the next stock I've got to buy and that's how mm. I make money. No, mm. it's the opposite. It's look at risk first. Now we've got to get into trading discipline. So why is trading discipline important? Well, firstly, what is it and why is it important? Well, I want you to answer this one because this oh, is God. a good one. I ask the question. So you're not going to answer it. Look, uh, you're what do a I will better say, answer than I am. Yeah, no, I don't. Know, I don't know about that. What I will say is that trading discipline is probably easier for people who are a bit more conservative. Yeah. So Why is that? The reason for that is because, the, and let's use these two people as an example, mm -hmm. because the person who's out there flying by the seat of their pants, mm -hmm. you know, goes for those ups and downs. Right. Whereas the other person and something in them that they haven't recognised yet, the other person is sort of holding back, waiting for the, you know, something to click before they're willing to go. Mm -hmm. So, but I think at some point those two people are going to meet in the middle. Yes. The one on the left, I think is much, it's much easier, I think, to bring them to the point where they can start to see yes. that. And they could, they're more likely to be able to put a trading discipline together. In terms of the, 
bringing it into their approach, whereas the other person will sort of want to go back to what they were doing before, if you know what I mean. They do. And, and I want to I want to ask a question like I'm good at doing. Over the last 20 years, I won't keep telling people how long we've been doing this, <laughs> is that how many times have we had people questioning um, the market and what we were doing because the market was either super bearish or whatever else mm. and it was putting a lot of pressure on us to change our process and our plan or not mm. adhere to our trading rules. Yep. And, you know, to me that's discipline because what I find, and this, you basically were touching on that, is people when they start getting challenged, mm. they start trying to change their trading plan and strategy to their detriment because well, they're a, trying to run it on the wing. On, but there's a there's yeah. a other aspects to this because there's the hmm. there's a discipline that's good for you, but then there's stuck in the mud. Correct. Right, and there's the fly by the seat of your pants. Hmm. So the fly by the seat of the pants is more likely to be sort of chasing everything. They can. Well, that's what I was talking about about the you know changing the, what they're yeah. doing. No hmm. consistency in their actual approach. Hmm. To try to chase the returns. Yeah. I mean, there's exactly what I was talking about in terms of the tech boom bust is I had friends that were just no discipline, just trading mm. tech stocks that I'd never heard of before that weren't even making money, blah, blah, blah. And I stuck to my trading plan and mm. I was making my returns year in, year out and they got way they went broke. Mm. But I was under enormous pressure by them every day. Going, oh, come on, let's trade. Come on, come on, Dale, come on, Dale. Mm. Just throw a thousand bucks into this, blah, blah, blah. And I went, no. Yep. And because it was you were more an investor, weren't you really? No, I was a trader then. Oh, okay. So I was trading true. then. But to me it was more of, no, I've got a plan yeah. that works. Why do I need to, to gamble with you guys because yep. you're a, emotional idiots? Mm. Basically that's because they were just, all they were thinking of is how much money they could make. Mm. And to me that is completely the wrong thinking when you're in the stock market. It's always about. It's easy to get caught up in that. It though. is. They were caught up in that hype. Mm. And Bitcoin was another one of those. So, you know, we had a lot so, of people. Saying, yeah. get into Bitcoin, Doug. That was into a Bitcoin. really good example, mm. actually, the Bitcoin scenario. Yeah. That shows that, that spectrum because we had people who would never mm. even touch Bitcoin mm. or any of those cryptos and then people who are in the middle on it mm. who are more who more ha use their trading thinking to and apply that to the cryptos to make sure that they can do it in a safe way. Mm. Mm. And then there are people who are just completely same people fly by the seat of the pants, people that thought, well, this is the latest and greatest things. I've got to be on it. As you mentioned, those friends of yours would be doing the same thing probably mm. and then they get burnt again. Well, to me, discipline is the ability to stick to your trading plan and your rules and your strategies regardless of market conditions. Mm. And uh, to me, a disciplined trader um, is never swayed by their emotions such as fear, mm. greed, panic, um, but they rely on their system because – They've, as we've talked about in previous podcasts and numerous times on our live streams and things like that is if you've back tested and you've got the strategy that works, then why would you not keep following it? Mm. Um, yes, you can adjust it a little bit because of the market's changing. That's right. You still have to have your solid carved in stone back tested strategies and plans that you know work. Mm. So why would you stray from that if you know it's successful? It's like, you know. Driving a car, you know, if somebody came up with some new way of driving a car that was a bit out there, mm. you probably wouldn't do it, <laughs> you know. So, uh, what? You hand, know. handstands on the steering wheel is that what something like that, you know, standing, you know, sitting your bum on the window so sill with, you and steering it. the car with your feet, you know, mm. something like that. You probably wouldn't do that either. But I know when I got my motorcycle, I shouldn't tell license, you my story then, should I? No, you don't do that. You stuck your head out of the the, the sunroof um, <laughs> or the moonroof, as they call them, something like that. But I remember when I got my motorbike license a year or so ago, all they kept talking about was staying safe and, and preparing and planning for things to happen mm. so that you could stay safe. But people, mm. young people have accidents on motorbikes because they don't stick to the plan. Mm. They, you know, they, they, they throw their risk yeah, it's out terrible. the window and it's terrible the accidents some of these young people have, mainly young males. But to me, trading discipline is really about having that Making just rational decisions and, and making rational decisions based on your defined trading plan. Now, we've talked mm. about trading plans on podcasts, the essential elements of trading plans. So if you haven't heard trading that Trading discipline, though, comes with time. So it's not something that you can you all confidence. of a sudden put a hat on and say, oh, you've got trading discipline. And mm. even when you're learning the strategies, mm. it takes a while. How, how long would you say, realistically, it takes for a person to really settle into using trading strategies and adopting them? 
Oh, look, a minimum 12 months, but it's mm. probably more like two years, mm-hmm. you know, because we know that when you're learning to trade, and this is the context of this podcast, people are just starting out in the first year or two of trading, is you try and experiment. And yeah. so you're always looking for things, new ways of doing things. And so you do the whole mm. suck it and see process. But even that should have a strategy around that, you know. Okay. Can we come back to that? that thinking about the two different types of people. So this person's going to be yeah. doing the suck it and see yeah. for quite a while. Yep. And this person here is maybe just going to stick to whatever we tell them to do yep. and they'll work out their strategies, yep. run with it, um, but are more likely to get stuck on yep. the strategies rather than actually being flexible somewhere in the middle. But at was- some point both are going to come in there and work out how to get the most out of it. But the first one, the suck it and see, generally takes a lot longer mm. because they have a lot more issues around profitability, inconsistency. They make a lot. They lose a lot. They, they're they also like a shotgun. They keep trying a oh, hundred different new things. So they're lacking focus. Mm. So they're trying, oh, they go here, they watch every video, they'll listen to every podcast, they'll read all these different books. They'll go to all these different places, ask chat forums, you mm. name it. They'll be everywhere taking in mountains and mountains and mountains of information and possibly education, but less than 5 or 10% of that is actually valuable. The mm. rest of it's crap. Um, whereas the person you're talking about that's a little bit more reserved, cautious, mm-hmm. that may be a little bit more um, risk adverse, who are getting stuck on some of that detail, eventually it's just, you know, with what we do with those people is, you know, we give them a gentle kick out the bum mm. and – Throw them out, of, you know, throw them out of the basket basically a little bit and get them to run. But one really important thing you said earlier is giving them the position size to a level that they're comfortable with so they don't have to be yes. trading with $10,000 positions or $100,000 positions. We might be saying to them, okay, well, what amount of money is is relatively inconsistent in, in, in what's the word? Not going to make your emotion inconsequential to you. Is it $500? Is it 1000 If you put $1,000 yeah. on this... Is that going to stress you too much if you lose mm-hmm. 100 bucks or $200? And they went, no, okay, okay well, that's, there's your position size. So we dip the toe in the water with them and then when they get comfortable with that, we say, okay, now let's increase the position size. And, well, if they want to. Yeah, I mean, it's just like walking in the water at the beach down at, you know, St Kilda Beach where it's freaking <laughs> cold in the water. You know, you dip your toe and you go, oh, that's a bit cool. And then you keep getting up to the knees and then when it gets up to your waist, you go, wow, that's really cold, you know. Uh, and But eventually swing no, that's around. that's where and I run out screaming. That's where you run out <laughs> screaming. But it's the same. We do that when getting into the, you know, the water. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about that as you get as you get comfortable, you move to the next level. But it's mm. taking that challenge on. But as I said, those people get to trading success faster than the first people. Generally the first people take two to ten years to get mm. there, easily two to ten years to get there because – they're so busy not being focused mm-hmm. on the right things and anything that sparkles, they'll go and be attracted chase the shiny to object. They'll chase the shiny object all the time or, you know. Um, and to me it's about having that discipline to be focused, getting the right rules, the right mm-hmm. strategies, okay. looking at your risk management. Now I want to get into the third area which is market yes. research because that's an area we haven't talked about. Now these are the areas mm-hmm. we've talked about in other podcasts specifically and gave a lot more detail but this one's more about looking at the market research. So we've talked a bit about in the past about technical analysis and fundamental analysis, but this is different again, isn't it? Have you got your phone? No, I don't have my phone anywhere. Do I need to smack? Do you need to smack? What was that bing noise? It wasn't me. We used to have, remember when we used to do live seminars and we used to have a thing is somebody. You confiscate their phone. No, no. We said if anybody's phone goes off, they've got to give us 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 one of, and, one of, and one of the people, yeah. one of the people in the room who knew us really well rang my mobile phone number and, and it, it was rang. in my computer bag and it rang. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> fantastic. That was so funny. But anyway, yeah. okay, so let's get into All market right. research. Okay, so market research now. Mm. How much mm. weight should anyone put on doing market research, whether it be about the stock, a market that the market that they're in, the sectors, how much research relative to everything else that they're doing should they be spending on that? A lot. I think, you know, you said it earlier, like 80% is psychology, 20% is the technique and the skill. So that's in how you trade in terms Hang of... Hang on. When you say a lot, 
Mm-hmm. What sort of market research are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about when you – so let's just assume you've got a proper trading strategy, trading mm. plan. Um, you've got the skills to trade you and understand stop losses and buy mm. and sell rules, all that sort of stuff. So that's what I'm talking about there is the 80% psychology yep. that you're confident and competent. Mm-hmm. So confident in that you know you've done the research, you've done the back testing, you know that your trading strategy and plan works, so you're mm. confident of that, but you're competent in delivering that. Okay. Then – so therefore, you've so that your psychology is there, your strategies are there, or your techniques. So mm. trading is an art form and a science. Science is the mathematics. Is, that's a, yeah. But the art form is is all around your thinking, so how you think about trading and how you think about money. Because some people think, you know, they go into trading thinking um, they have a poor mentality. If you know what I mean, they're thinking that there's money is scarce. It's mm. hard to get. Yep. Um, they think they have thinking of, oh, I'm not that successful or I never will be successful. Mm. They have these bad beliefs. But if you don't, if you work on that side of things in your psychology, then trading is super easy. But okay. Okay. So the market research. How does the research, market research help that? Okay. The market research then is complements all of that. So you're looking, because you understand what stocks and style of stocks and that you need for your portfolio, then your market research is pinpointed into making sure you're getting a watch list of stocks that are congruent with who you are and how you want to trade. So I'd be looking at things like economic factors. I'd be looking at well, what's the economy I'm in. Mm-hmm. So what's the Australian or, you know, US economy or, you know, world economies, what's going on there? Um, I'd be looking at things like, you know, obviously um, how to bring in um, other data like CPI, interest rates, you know, also things like, the fundamental and technical research. I might get in, I will get into the technical data, like looking for narrowing my watch list down to stocks that fit it in terms of liquidity and market capitalization and getting into that, looking at other metrics in, pers- in terms of fundamental analysis like P ratios and EPS, et cetera. So there's a numerous amount of market research that I'm actually going to do. So when you say market research, because market research can conjure up different things. It's not mm. how to trade, but it's not listening to lots of media commentary on stuff. Oh, shit, no. That's right. That's just, I'd rather turn it off. Yeah, so what you're wanting to do is first market research could be about understanding the market and understanding the stocks and the sort of stocks that you might want to trade. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. It's, you know, like I've, I don't know how many times I've ever said it on podcasts, you know, it's like if I'm trading, if I'm like, if I'm trading, you can just give me, um, um, what do you call it? a spreadsheet with the data, mm. with the open, high, low, close volume of anything anywhere in the world, don't even put a name on it, mm. um, give me the spreadsheet and give me some charting paper and some pens and I'll draw it and trade it without knowing what the stock is. Or Yep. So um, in other words, what you're saying is that you don't, yeah. that's why I was a bit surprised by your answer because yeah. I'm thinking, you know, you, you don't, you're not going to sit there and reading watching the news and what, what, waiting for stories to come out about different stocks. No, and I'm just really selective that. of what I get on my market but, research. But if you were looking to buy a stock, would you at least look at what's going on? Because there could be class actions happening with companies. There could be um, mm-hmm. stocks might go ex-dividend and that may be important to what could happen with the share price. Well, it is. You need to look at anything that's going to affect or ha- may have. Could be a about to go into reporting season. Yeah. I mean, whatever may affect your trading decision, mm. you need to look at. So there's stock specific stuff you need to look at, like yep. dividends, when it's being paid, when they're reporting. You might need to look at that. You obviously need to look at its funda- its fundamental data, mm-hmm. meaning dividend yields, P ratios, EPS, as I mentioned. You might look yep. at all of that sort of stuff, market capitalization. You might look at that. You also then will look at the technical side of things. Now, if I'm trading, and we, as we discussed in another podcast, you know, if you're trading for a short period of time, then fundamentals are a lot less mm. uh, of your focus. But if you're, you're wanting to buy for three to ten years, then it, fundamentals is pretty much all your focus. Mm. So there's research around both of those, but we put them together. Yep. So, you know, to me, if I'm just trading short term, then just keep sliding pizzas under the door with the charting paper and I'm fine. I don't need to see what's going on in the news, but... Looking at the market in terms of subscribing or having access to some really quality, good economic stuff coming mm. through, it is really important. Like, and it could be things if you're interested in iron ore, getting really good mm-hmm. reports from good sources, but limit the sources that you get stuff from. Yep. Not go everywhere. Perhaps go alternate to alternative. And mainstream sources, media is the mainstream. worst place to yep. get information from mm. in terms of. 
Yeah, because uh, you don't know what pep- or you know the, who's behind writing that article. Hmm. Have they just written throwaway lines? Well, I've never met a red activists met a, are writing it. Yeah, well, I've never People met a rich journalist. People employed by companies who they're writing about are writing it. Yeah, and they're yep. just taking data from companies and then writing up some sort of article mm. to to make money for advertisers or, or however they're doing it. But there's some really good research houses out there doing really good independent research mm-hmm. that could help you depending on the style of trading. So that's the market research. But again, it's like trading in a, in a recessionary environment mm-hmm. is different than trading in a growth environment. The challenge environment. is, right, for new people to the market, and, and yeah. I guess I, I didn't really comprehend this at the start mm-hmm. when I first started learning, is that to an extent as you're learning – you you're, you have to continue to adjust what you're doing because the market changes and the stocks change over it time. Does. So it could be that, you know, the way that you're thinking about the market is evolving mm-hmm. and so therefore the way that you're going to be doing things yeah. down the track in five, ten years' time is going to be potentially completely different to what you're doing today anyway. It does. And it's, and it's those cycles in the market have to come around. So maybe you started when the market was pulling back so that those economic things that you're talking about, different um, aspects of the stocks that are coming up in the media, reporting season could mm. be different in terms of results and the way that the analysts are talking about it and how that's affecting the individual share prices, whether there's misses mm. or they're meeting expectations. But just taking all of that in and absorbing it. Now, there's two sides to this. One is that you just trade in a vacuum, and like you we said, can do that. with a pizza. With the pizza under the door, yeah. With the te- with the doing the analysis Hunt and the back and testing, best. knowing that you're going to have losses, but over time you'll lose. Yeah. Or you can try to absorb a lot of this market information as well as you're going along. Yep. Yeah. And then that can potentially help you learn things and adjust your sales as you go. Well, can because I know when we've talked about this in the past, we can say if something's more, if the economics of something, the fundamentals of something is positive, and then the technicals line up, it's such a good trade. Mm. So understanding some of the things around it. Now, obviously, more recently, we've had a lot more talk about Australia possibly going into a recession. Mm-hmm. So, and a lot of people are going, oh, that's bad from the stock market. No, I think it's exciting because part of the market research is to go and look at past recessions and mm-hmm. go, well, what happened in past recessions? Now, the worst one that most people understand was, you know, the, the Great Depression out of the 1929 mm-hmm. market crash. Our market went up three hundred percent. Yeah, like seriously, why? And that's a depression, mm-hmm. not a recession. So there are other recessionary environments we can go and look at and say, well, what happens during a recessionary environment? And the thing is, to me, there's opportunity in recessionary environments yeah, because people exactly it's a know, contrarian thinking. It's a isn't contrarian it? thinking. So to me, the scary parts are when the market is so bullish. Mm. That's the scary part because you never ever know exactly where the peak's going to happen. That's right. They're the harder ones to pick. And if you buy, if you're the last buyer before it turns and mm. falls away, then you're left holding the baby, That's basically, right. you know, and everybody's running and to the hills. And it's messy. And it's messy. So to me, that's the interesting thing is people should be looking at that market research and going back and going, okay, well, we're moving into a recessionary environment probably, mm. but where are we going to that and doing it? So to me, that's all part of okay. the whole thing. So, I mean, to me, I mean, that sums up what we talked about. We talked about risk and um, we talked about, obviously, um, trading, said, discipline, trading discipline and market and, research. And, and market research. So we've given a lot. But there's so we've a lot got of to depth. incorporate all of those things into our thinking. Mm. But the beauty of it is that you can cut a lot of stuff out and just bring mm. it back and keep it simple. And that's yeah. that's the ideal scenario. And having that structure behind you means you can always go back to that and, and ignore everything yeah. else that's going on. It is in the trading. If you plan to fail, you plan to fail to plan. You plan to fail. That's mm. clever. Yeah, I've got to say it. And to me, what we talked about is planning to be successful. Mm-hmm. And it's simple. It's easy. People should be should be looking at the stock market with excitement right now and, and starting to learn. So I think let's wrap this up. But I mean, you know, for people who are listening to this on the podcast on Apple iTunes or whatever else, you know, please give us a, a five star rating and a nice little review. We'd really appreciate that. But if you do want to watch this live, we do put it onto. We actually record this on camera, so go to YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and type in uh, Wealth Within TV. A YouTube channel will come up and you can watch Jenny and I do this um, and on, on your screen or your device or whatever you want to do that too. But do head over to talkingwealth.com and, and subscribe to it. It's like $3.50 something a month, a That's week, sorry, nothing. to hundreds of interviews like Jeff who I met, interviewed yesterday. Brilliant. 
Yeah. What we were talking about yesterday, and he's he he works with people on the stock market and help them plan mm. to get better returns. And what he's talking about is brilliant. And he's just one of dozens and dozens of high quality experts. And I was chatting to a, somebody who subscribed to Talking Wealth only this morning, and they're going, "Wow, there's so much great content mm. and value in there." He said, "I'm just scratching the surface to me," and I think. For three dollars fifty for a week, it's mm. like, dude, it's nothing. Don't even. It's a no brainer to my book. Just mm. do it because you'll learn how to make money. Much better than watching the channel nine or seven or ten news. I know. And stuff imagine like get that. just um, mm. putting that into your kids, telling them that, that you know they need to watch one a week, write some bullet points as yeah. to what they got out of it, and give them something. You know, some reward. Yeah. Much better it. than a Netflix. Netflix to me, we people we we watch junk TV. Well, no, you can use Netflix to, to make as ourselves the brain dead. You can yeah. watch a couple of hours of Netflix, but you have to watch That's a good one idea. of Talking Wealth and then give me some bullet points. What do you do? Teach mm. your kids to be self-sufficient and make money. I like that idea. Make them, you know, they don't that, have to be entrepreneurs, but they're going to be financially Well, we secure. keep our kids away from junk food, don't we? We That's try right. to keep them away from give junk them food the and give them healthy the food. junk and the healthy. So keep them away from junk TV yeah. and give them healthy TV. But it's what we program our brains with that come that causes, yeah, you know, garbage in, garbage of, out. <laughs> so program it with TalkingWealth.com. Head over there and subscribe to it. Well, you've been listening to Talking Wealth with Janine and Dale. We're uh, Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within and Janine Cox is our Senior Analyst here at Wealth Within. If you need anything, just head over to wealthwithin.com.au. If you want to check out our courses, please do so. Just click on the Education tab at the top of the menu button on our website and you'll find out all the information and talk to our guys. They're all traders themselves. So even if you've got an inkling that you'd like to think about you know, learning to trade, head over and just give us a talk because you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. But that's it from us on Talking Wealth. We'll catch you next time. Take care.